Welcome to get you up to speed here. If you didn't watch the $2 Super Famicom video, you should go check that out, by the way. I mentioned the stuff that happened with the Famicom itself because I tried to make a video about it. Long story short, I didn't do a good job of filming it. Shaky camera work with my phone. Fairly bad audio from the phone. And spoiler alert, I was not able to fix it. I, I don't know why I'm putting out a spoiler alert. There is no video for you to watch to be spoiled. So I bought another Famicom, just Famicom, not the combo from Bayi. Go check that video out. Link down below, maybe. Unboxing on this channel, full review on the main channel. And that one was just completely fine. It was a little gross, but I had already put so much work into cleaning and de-yellowing the shell and all the other stuff. The controllers are fine on this one. I ended up just swapping the motherboards over. Anyways, we have the working good and clean Famicom in the this. <laughs> we have my CRT that is whirring. And here is the Famicom disk system that has been trying to run Mario Golf the entire time I've been talking, but it has not been successful. Just continually loading. Now, we can do one of these. Error, what? You're probably not gonna be able to hear it from this mic, but there is no whirring coming from this here. Now, I don't know much about floppy disk or the Famicom disk system, but typically disks need to be spun in order to be read. So I'm gonna assume that we'll hear some sort of whirring noise when we put this in. And there is a motor noise coming from this thing, but there is no whir. It sounds like the motor is trying to spin something, but it just can't. Now, I don't know if it's a bad motor or if the pulleys are a little old, because this is about as, actually, no, my parents are still older than this. Hi, mom and dad. This is an old system. It's from the 80s, which, by the way, was over 40 years ago. So the rubber band in the pulleys could be bad. It could be completely snapped in half, it could be dried out, might just need a replacement. That's my guess as to what this is. Leave your guess in the comments down below, or maybe not because then you might get spoiled on whether or not I actually fix this or how I fix this. So uh, do what you want. <laughs> but all I know is that we have sound, we have video output. This cartridge is gonna need some heavy cleaning and there's a lot of dust in this machine here. So it could be just a dust problem too. Let's tear it apart and find out. All right, let's tear this thing down. I'm actually gonna start with tearing this down because this is just really gross and it needs to be cleaned really bad. So we got four Phillips screws here and then we can just pop that off. Wow, there's a lot more tech than this than I thought. What is this pin set up? What? It's like a build, it looks like the Nintendo office building in Japan. What? Okay. This is interesting. I also like, does anybody know what this is? Because at first, like, is it, it doesn't fit that. Is it for like a, another peripheral or something? Which I don't know why you'd want to plug this back into it. I don't know, but there's a lot of hardware in this thing. There's multiple chips. Okay. I mean, really it just needs to be cleaned on the pins and the shell is disgusting. <laughs> is this the only internal screw? Can I take this slidey thing off? No, I cannot. Cool. Okay. Well, I'm probably not gonna do probably not gonna do any insane cleaning on this other than some isopropyl alcohol. You'll probably see that on screen now or later. This I'll probably deep clean the plastics though. That is nasty. And uh speaking of holy crap, why is this not what? Okay, just only do it from the middle. If you do it from the Wow, okay, this is super dusty in here. I know that. And like 6C batteries, man, come on. Dusty, dusty, dusty. Does this come out? No, I know there's a screw in there. How am I supposed to access that? Maybe I don't need to access it yet. Okay, can the LTT screwdriver? No, no it cannot. It does not reach in there. Okay, can my screwdriver? I fix it, swing and a miss. Okay, can we get this thing to fit in there. What are we doing? Okay, put that in there, put that in there. I think this is going to be even thicker, yeah. Okay, 
I will go look for a thinner screwdriver. Woo! I don't know if this is going to be the right size bit, but yeah, it feels like I'm going to strip it. Yeah, okay, I'm going to strip these if I use this. I'll be back. Oh my gosh, I had to go all the way out into the garage to find this, and it barely fits. Wow. There we go. There's only six screws in here. It's kind of obvious where they are. This is before they got crafty and hid them underneath the, the feet. And I believe they're all going to be the same size. And they're probably identical to the all the other Phillips screws that they use in all of their home consoles. Oh, and there is crap flying out because it's dusty. Whew. But there's like dried up double-sided tape maybe and paper. Okay. We've got <laughs> a very simple daughter board that just has positive and negative wire going to the LED. We could change the LED color if we want. Now we can use the LTT screwdriver again. And there we go. There's our oddly shaped red LED. Those two more screws in this, but we got to be careful because it's soldered. So that's fun. There's two more over here. All of these screws are identical so far. So I'm not too worried about it. Does this take that out? Does that give us access? Well, we're still wired into the entire floppy disk drive assembly. So we can take those out. Now these are different, but I don't really need to separate them because I think it's kind of obvious where they go. So far, at least. There might be similar screws that we take apart where we'll need to separate them, but I don't think so. So I'll just put all these. Over there and can we take this out now it is very heavy i feel like there's something holding it in that's not a screw like some double-sided tape are those the rubber feet nope something else interesting okay now we should be able to take this entire assembly out if the power board didn't slot itself back into place come on oh my gosh you came out just fine earlier I feel like I'm talking to my dog. Come on. There we go. Good job. Good girl. Okay. So let's look at the bottom here. Everything looks actually super clean and good on the, the power board here. Might try and uh, clean this up a little bit because that is a port that we need to use. Other than that, this actually looks beautiful. Can we? Oh, we can detach it. Thank you. The, the Famicom does not allow you to detach it without just desoldering it. The Famicom power board. This is the disk system. Another piece. I don't, I'm assuming this is a double-sided tape of some sort. We can tear this down further. I think for now, I might just want to blow a bunch of dust out of it and then like power it back on while it's disassembled to see what happens. So I'm just going to use my canned air here for a second. Okay, so for this, we can actually just plug it in with the Genesis adapter. It probably needs power from a Famicom, is my guess. Ugh, fine. Why? Why do you do this to me, you stupid? Ugh, I hate Apple. What? I didn't even do a thumbs down. You just thought I did a thumbs down. I'm back. I, uh, apparently, they thought I was doing a thumbs down, so they're like, oh, let's do the stupid emoji thing. This isn't FaceTime, man. Breaks OBS when that happens. I guess might as well clean up the pins on this first. We have to have a Famicom attached. So what I'm going to do here, I mean, I've already used a Q-tip on this. So I think I'm just going to go for the fiberglass pen. I've been trying to use it less and less because it does scrape a little bit. It's not as bad as like steel wool. These pins have just seen better days man this was a very well loved disc system okay so if we put this in there put this in the back here and then we get to put our batteries back in and then plug the genesis or plug the famicom in turn it on should all be on all right where's golf what's going on why aren't we i'm gonna put the shell back on this okay there we go so it just doesn't spin. It just it just doesn't spin. That's it. It's like definitely trying to. Huh. I, I think it's literally just it won't spin. Okay. Let's tear it apart further and investigate more. Those are definitely shorter. Oh, that's inside of it. Interesting. 
why is it exposed? So do you still you still need to unscrew it to remove it, but you can't take it out? Or maybe I just made it harder on myself. Probably just made it more hard on myself. This just seems like it's gummed up. Okay. How do I just keep tearing it apart? I guess. Might as well. Okay. Oh, there's a wire there. This might be a good time to mention I've never opened up one of these before. Never seen inside of a Famicom disk system until now. So those are buttons. Yep. Those are definitely buttons. So is this like a... Oh, that's a rubber band that just exploded. That's what all of that is. That's got to be it. Okay. So I disassembled the wrong part. That band... Oh, wow, that's a long screw. That band just completely burst. That's got to be it. So... Ooh, this is scary. How does one remove this? Taking that off. A little gross. Does that allow us to remove this? There's a couple of springs. Another button-like thing. I don't know if I'm getting this apart, but I would just like to know. What do I just... Oh, I'm like wiggling it free a little bit. There's like this one pin here. It seems like it's stuck on this. I don't want to force it, but I kind of do need it out. Does this pin come out if I push on it? No, nope. I feel like it will. I don't know, it still spins it, so maybe it's the motor. I'm going to do some more research and uh, clean up the plastics a bit, and then I'll come back with a little more knowledge because nothing's too obvious other than I'm pretty sure this was another rubber band that tied this whole system together. So yeah, I'm sure someone's fixed one of these before and posted about it on the internet. Let's end this clip by breaking the, the video file. I like how they thought that was a uh, double thumbs down. That was two thumbs up but I guess I do have it flipped upside down. Anyways, don't mind the capacitors over there. They're all dead. I did some research after, and I found that there's actually a band. Those black pieces that I found throughout this shell were uh, pieces of dried up band, rubber band, whatever the band is that holds the, uh, the spinny things together. I'm a professional. And so I bought some that are specific for this online and uh, we get to replace it. Now I got a pack of 10. I don't know if I'm ever going to do this to 10 Famicom disk systems, but I've got 10 of them in case I accidentally break one, I guess, I don't know. I guess I will shout out Retro Snoop on eBay. Do you wanna follow them on Instagram, I guess? It was a little ridiculous. It was $10 for 10 of them. I think I didn't have to pay shipping though, so I guess that's fair but I don't know where it came from and it took a very long time to get here. So <laughs> yeah, it wasn't my favorite experience because it's been like two or three weeks since I recorded the last part. But think, did I actually screw this back together? I did not. Okay, cool. But the screws are in there. So they're gonna fall out when I do this and go everywhere. I don't think I need to take anything apart other than the disc drive here. So let's see if we can remove this. And this only, <laughs> we can slide this off and that can go over there. And then we should be able to just unplug this. Cool, sweet, so much less to tear down. I'll put all this off to the side and tear this apart. Now we can hopefully lift this. Oh yeah, I forgot there was a switch there. Be careful of the switch when you're removing this. Just don't follow what I do, okay? There is a plug over here that we can hopefully unplug. Where's my tweezers at? Dang, that was a really tight connection there. But now we are free and this is where the band goes. It's gonna stretch from here to over here. And we have a little bit of rubber band remnants right there that we can go ahead and try and remove. I'm gonna have to set all this down. I'm gonna switch this over to manual focus. It almost looks like there's some glue on this piece of rubber band because it's like got green and blue on it. Or maybe it's corrosion and that's why it dried out and snapped. I don't know. Go from the other side. Oh yeah, that's peeling up a little bit nicer. At least a small chunk came off. I feel like they did glue this rubber band in. Well, maybe not. I feel like maybe not. 
Probably not, because the rubber band probably shifts around. I don't know. Right now, it's stuck on there. So try some isopropyl alcohol. Seems to be working something. Oh, that actually worked very well. Okay, I'm going to try and get my toothbrush in there. Maybe a, a Q-tip? Huh. Just going to scrape it a bit. Scrape whatever crap this is. I can't really... I guess I can kind of show you. Like, that's what I'm dealing with here. And, like, I can kind of scrape it up. Oh, can I take this out? I don't know if I want to take it out. I'm just going to fast forward through this because this is pretty boring. Okay. I think that's about as clean as I can get it. Uh, To be fair, I should look at this wheel. And there's, like a little bit of black marks but there's no like actual chunks anywhere that's good i will uh wipe it down i guess a little bit i don't know if anything's gonna come off with like a q-tip a little bit okay i'll i'll make my way around this wheel or am i just wiping off grease and it needs to be here to keep it spinning right i guess we'll find out it looks pretty darn clean now there's a little spot there and uh, my Q-tip is pretty dirty. And so is my finger a little bit. A little bit rubbed off my finger. That's all right. So from here, it's going to be a small pain. I'll zoom out a little bit. But I'm just going to rip this note off. Sorry, Snoop. You're getting in my way. I just need one of these, fellas. And then we can wrap it around there. And then we magically just need to wrap it around there. Simple enough, right? I do apologize because this is going to be pretty hard to see since it's very clear <laughs> and you also can't just take this off you can kind of do this like spinning motion thing like this that doesn't sound good at all there we go i think this is what i was trying to do i don't know we have to maneuver this in such a weird way i need to get in there look around a bit so one way or another slide this rubber band underneath there without folding any of it I'm going to try just run this around. Dang it. Uh, I think I'm doing this wrong. Okay, so that just comes off completely. Well, that makes it a heck of a lot easier. I didn't think that actually came apart. The video I watched, the guy did not take that completely off. Hopefully that's not a problem. But we are locked in. Cool. See, that might be where the problem lies, is I think this gear needs to be underneath it. Oh, no. But I think we are back in business just like that. Okay, we are on the struggle bus. I don't know how to put this back together. Okay, so I got the wheel back on. No rubber band, but I do need to see where we have to go around. And it looks like it just needs to go in between. Huh? This will be in the middle of the bands. Okay, got it. So I feel like I can take this off. So band seems to work well so if our goal is to only have this one in between it's on the inside of everything else then hmm, i feel like i should keep the band like this maybe loosely around here i think i'm getting it need to this one to go underneath like that okay Ooh, i still think we're in the clear I just need to manage to get this locked in like that. And can we get this gear spinning? Yes, we can. Call me Bob the freaking builder. So we need to lift this back up a little bit. Hmm. Still going to be kind of hard to wrap this around. So, uh-oh, not where we want that band. Probably just be smart if I looked up the video again on how the dude did this. But we're cooking now. Well, why would I look up how to do this if I did it all by myself? The band is a little twisted, but we can do a couple rotations here and see that everything is spinning, including this gear over here. And the band is perfectly straight. So we can click that into place, give it a couple more spins, see that it's working. And I think we finally did it. We're only 30 minutes into this recording. So I'm going to go ahead and screw the long screws in start putting everything back together oh this is a pain in the butt pain in my you know what there we go i have to go out to the garage and get a different screwdriver if i want to screw this together so we'll just test it before we fully finish it okay we're over at the tv and uh we're gonna try this out i apologize if you hear the whine of the crt can't really do much about it it's making a little bit of noise right now, and it's on zero volume. 
So, and it's not just like the normal CRT wine. It's like very odd sounding. And it's based off of what the squiggles are doing. But anyways, we're going to turn this on. We've got some signal. I hear motors moving. Okay. Game's not in it though. So let's put Mario Golf in. We'll do side A. Yo. Oh. Well, it's a different error. The The sucky part about this is I don't have a disk system game that is um, known to be good. This is the only disk system game I have. Error. So we got two different errors. I'm gonna put it back to the other side again. Okay, error 21 again. Disk trouble. And like, I don't really know what to do with this. Try side B once again. Okay, so apparently I just need to recalibrate the motor. So I'm assuming it's a lot like a potentiometer on the uh, the GameCube. So you just need to adjust the laser. But I don't think this is a laser. So uh, we can tear this apart and adjust that. Okay, so I've torn this apart, just set it up like this. So I can adjust the potentiometer, which I should probably get a screw. Probably shouldn't adjust it with it on. I'm going to treat it like a potentiometer and just like twist it a little bit every time until it says something. Okay. I don't know if that's actually doing anything though. It doesn't really seem like it's doing anything because there's like a rubber gasket in there and like I feel like I'm twisting something but I can't really tell. Okay well I don't know what 22 is. Okay well now it's just stuck. It's not spinning anymore. It did spin for a while but it hasn't spit out an error. So does that mean we're close? Did I mess it up completely? It's going. It's doing something. So now that I'm getting a disk error 22 instead of 21, I'm being told that I need to adjust this thing that's in here. There's like the spinning part in the middle of the disk drive. You need a little Allen key, but I've got some Allen key adjacent bits from my iFixit kit. So I'm just going to twist and adjust with that. I don't really know how to explain it. I will also have a link in the description for the tutorial I just watched. This isn't really a tutorial, it's for entertainment purposes. If you get anything from it, awesome. Okay, that is frozen now. All right, still getting error 22. My camera's about to cut off, so I'll come back if I have anything or if I've given up. Holy crap, that flies out. <laughs> Hello, okay, we're, we're recording. Uh, part. 85 of trying to get this freaking Famicom disk system to work. Uh, I got the CRT back out for you. It's probably been out. I It's been like a month or so since I've recorded the last bit. There's a new shirt, RetroRemastered.com. I'll hopefully remember to link in the description. You should go buy it. I'm really proud of it. But anyways, uh, this is not the right setting. I'm just going to go ahead and turn this on. Oh, it's like I forgot. It's like 94, 95, or 96, something like that. Gotta love it. How are you guys doing? Good? Did you buy the shirt yet? You chilling? There we go. Okay. 96. So my theory is that this one just doesn't work because you put it in. Doesn't matter. Side A or side B. I put in B first. And it spits out error 21. Good news is I have a whole stack of Famicom Disk System games now. So I'm just going to try them and see how many of them work. Let's go. If any of them work, I just really, if one of them works, I will be happy. I just want to know that I fixed the, the system. Error 21. I don't even know what half of these games are. I just like, ah, this kind of looks like Poyo Poyo. Like, I, I don't know what that is. This one's got a lady making a phone call on it. That's what we're trying next. This one I know is Metroid because I specifically wanted it for Metroid. And it looks great, so it should work, right? I have a feeling if they're all giving error 21, it's probably not going to work. Error 22, that's different. I'm going to try side B because I really want Metroid to work. Pretty sure this one's Castlevania. It looks like it. That one's completely blank. It doesn't have any labels at all. There's some writing on the paper here, but no idea what it says. Try side B in case it's one of those with... Well, that's a different color. I've never seen it green before. Is that a good sign or they just, no, okay. Still 22, it's only got one side on it. That was weird. Something's wrong with that. It's not closing all the way. Okay, well, that's weird. Nice, last try. And it's still not closing all the way. I don't know what to do. 
I think I might just post this video and ask you guys at home if any of you know what I'm doing wrong. Please help. That'd be awesome. I think this might be my first failure video. Huh. That's fun. Hey. So I just wanted to cut in here at the end and just do a little recap because I know this video is very messy. I just finished editing it. I opened it up. I cleaned it up. Normal process that I do. Didn't mess anything up. I put in a new belt. I did do the adjustment when you're supposed to line up the three holes. I just didn't show it. It was what I did like the first time I was over in this angle, I think, or the second time in the middle of the video. I also adjusted another thing. I can't remember. <laughs> I've adjusted all the things that I can adjust. Wow, this is really a bad postmortem analysis. I replaced all the capacitors. I did that completely offline because that was after I recorded the last bit you just saw. And I, it went nowhere. So I'm like, I'm not even going to bother editing this. But I did replace all the capacitors. All of that was successful. It's all just really frustrating. I've, I've adjusted every belt, every knob, every motor, everything that I know of. I have adjusted and I honestly don't want to keep adjusting it. I think I just have a bad unit. Like I think the like maybe the the head whatever reads it is just dead. I don't know if there's replacements for that. I don't know if that's even possible. I don't know. Maybe I've just adjusted it that all the different things that I can adjust are so far off that it's going to be nearly impossible to perfectly align it. There is like no information online about this thing like yeah there's a wiki and like it gives you information on what the error codes mean and stuff like that but it's like the error codes still don't even really help when they're decoded some of them are helpful some of them aren't the ones that i'm running to don't really make a difference for me i got one of them to like kind of boot for a second after i did the capacitor swap and was adjusting the i don't even know like i don't even though to call the things that I've adjusted, this has been such a frustrating project. And what's even worse is even if I bought a new Famicom, like I guess I could buy a new disc system that has the belt replaced because like, like a fully refurbished one and just say, screw it. I'm not going to save money and fix it myself because I've already lost money on this. I'm in the whole on this, I don't even know how much. Still probably less than $100, but more than I would like to be for not having a working unit. But if you have any ideas, <laughs> if you are knowledgeable at all with the Famicom Disk System, please, please let me know. I know this video is a complete and utter mess, and it's not a tutorial, so I wasn't trying to make it easy to follow along with, but I thought it was simple enough for me to fix, so I didn't think I was going to have to be that like in-depth on all this stuff, and it's also been done over like four months at this point, <laughs> so my knowledge on what I've done, even though I've recorded a good chunk of it, not great, but if you've fixed a lot of Famicom disk systems, and you would like to reach out and maybe like actually talk to me, maybe Discord or something, reach out in the comments, join the Discord, say something. I would love to try and fix this. Uh, but I think at this point, it would require someone who knows way more than me about this specific thing. And it would be like a one-on-one -on -one fixing consultation section. session. I can't even speak. This is the end of the video. I'm going to make a video on something else that is related to this right now. And that's why there's no red light on here, but that's working because I I've got this, uh, the weirdest little flash cart I've ever seen. Maybe that'll be the next video out. I don't know. Bye.